Do you have piles? I got piles, I got my OP pile and there's my personal preference pile and this one comes from I never heard about this gun pile. But hey guys, welcome back as always my name is Lazar and today we're going to be diving deeper into this mastery rank 9 secondary weapon, the Embolist. As per the usual, I'm gonna be having a cheap build, something affordable that anybody can build, but of course we also have the quote-unquote endgame setup with a Riven. That said though, my builds and guides take a new player-friendly approach, simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please, bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Embolist. Let's begin by quickly taking a look at how the weapon behaves without any mods equipped, after which we're going to be jumping into stats, mods, all that good stuff. The Embolist is a secondary beam weapon and as soon as you pull your trigger you're going to be getting a frontal beam with a limited range of about 10 meters. Now I say about 10 meters because the wiki states 9 meters, but from my own very simple testing I am able to consistently get damage within 10 even 11 meters. Now, to be perfectly frank here, if it's 10, if it's 9, if it's 11, it doesn't really matter because this is awfully short by Warframe standards. But this is a beam weapon and that means that per each and every single ammo, you're gonna be getting 2 damage ticks on your target, which means 2 possible applications of a status effect. Now, this is part of the reason that currently in Warframe, beam weapons are very, very powerful. And also, as soon as you shoot, you're not getting 100% of the weapon's damage. You're getting about 45%, which quickly ramps up to 100% over the course of 0.6 seconds. Now, to be frank with you guys, that one doesn't really matter because 0.6 seconds is a blink of an eye. Again, you're getting loads of damage out of the weapon. Now, let's have a look at them stats to see precisely what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is gonna be 60 out of 60, and if your embolist has only 30 out of 30, jump into actions and install the Auto King Catalyst. Now this one can be found primarily from Nightwave. You're gonna have to do some challenges, but you can also pay 20 plat to have one installed. You can also get it from the sortie, and you can also get it from alerts and invasions after dev streams. My weapon has been format a total of five times, but I only do this because I wanna test various mod combinations, ribbons, and so on and so forth. For the weapon build I'm recommending you guys, you can get away with free Forma. Simply add 3 V symbols or 2 V symbols and a dash depending on which way you choose to build the weapon. The accuracy is gonna be 100 which is pretty much par for the course when it comes to beam weapons and I would recommend you look into Magnum Force. Now Magnum Force normally isn't a mod that shows up on a lot of builds. You got 165% extra damage at the cost of minus 55% accuracy. This being a corrupted mod. If you don't know how to farm corrupted mods, think of the cards right now. Now the accuracy is 8.3, yes I know, 100 minus 55 should not be 8.3, but rest assured it does work as intended. And the resulting accuracy to be honest isn't that bad, I can barely feel it, so do go for Magnum Force, because the critical chance and critical multiplier on the weapon is barely there, 3% with 1.5x. The only way to get this weapon to crit consistently would be to either get a kitty buff or perhaps use it with Lord Harrow. Even then it's not really all that worth because the critical multiplier is only 1.5x. If you were to go to prime target cracker, you're still only getting 3.2x. Bottom line, it's simply not worth building the embolist for critical chance and critical damage. We got a fire rate of 8 with a magazine of 33 and a quick reload at 1.3 seconds and it's a good thing that the reload is fast because 33 is simply not all that much. Riven disposition of 5 out of 5 which means that the weapon is not very powerful and the Rivens on the other hand will be fairly potent. A status chance of 41% sky high and we got default toxin damage on the weapon which is glorious, freaking beautiful. Now. Treat that toxin as a very last mod somewhere around here when it comes to combination. So for example, if I were to slap convulsion on the weapon, a bit of electricity, I'm gonna be getting corrosive out of the weapon. Or I can go for heat and make gas damage, especially if you're going down to Fortuna. Gas, from my point of view, with this weapon is the way to go. And of course, since I already have an elemental on the weapon, it's gonna be a whole lot easier to create a double elemental setup, corrosive and blast, because I'm stupid. It's an option, what? You can go for something like that. Now let's have a look at a standard build and I'm gonna give you a couple of options and the reasoning behind the mods. First off, critical chance and critical damage is off the table. We're gonna be getting our damage from Hornet Strike and Magnum Force, multi-shot with Battle Diffusion and Lethal Torrent. And let's pause a little bit when it comes to multi-shot on beam weapons. 
if I were to add, let's clear up the numbers so it's a lot more clearer for you guys. So if I was to add multi-shot, something like Battle Diffusion, you will see that my status chance does not go up. Normally when you add multi-shot to a heat scan weapon, for example, your status chance also goes up because you are firing multiple bullets at the same time. That's what you call a shot status chance. In the case of beam weapons, however, only your damage gets increased because you're not firing multiple beams at the same time. Keep in mind that the damage increased from multi-shot on beam weapon seems to be based off the modded damage value, not the base damage value. So it's still super worth going for multi-shot. So we got Little Torrent and Battle Diffusion, next the Elemental Combo. Now, this will depend again where you're going, who you're fighting. You're going down to Fortuna, simply build gas on the weapon. You can even go for a double Elemental Combo, that's also pretty good. But in my case, I'm gonna go up against Corrupted Heavy Gunners. Now these guys, girls, have Ferrite Armor, and Ferrite Armor will be taking 75% more damage from Corrosive. Not only that, but on a status proc, I'm gonna also be reducing that armor, so my subsequent shots will be dealing more and more damage. Ruinous Extension is here. Now, this is not a very common mod. Not a lot of people know about it. It adds 8 range because, honestly, I can't play the weapon with only 10 meters worth of range. It's simply not enough. It's annoying. You want to hit an enemy, you shoot. It's not doing damage. So, adding 8 range will make a hell of a difference. Our range is going to be going to something like 18 because this is an additive effect. Ruinous Extension from the trade chat, you're looking at 10, 15 plat. Honestly, it's not all that expensive and it's pretty easy to farm. Augur Pact. Now this is a mod I almost never use. Why didn't you use one of the 60-60 mods to get more status chance and more corrosive on the weapon? Something like, let's say, I don't know... Jolt or Pistol Pestilence. Either of these two would have been a great option. The problem is that if I go for any of these, then I'm gonna be overstripping my target. And I'm gonna be highlighting exactly what I mean just a tad later. But first, this is the base build I'm recommending to you guys. Nothing here is expensive. You don't have Ruinous Extension, you don't want the added range, then that's fine by me. Do whatever you want to use Pistol Pestilence instead. But again, I do recommend the mod on the Embolist. I honestly think it's mandatory. Now, level 120 Corrupted Heavy Gunners, let's see what the weapon can do. First and foremost, I can stay way over here, because I can now and deal a whole lot of damage. You will see that the weapon slowly and surely melts the target. How can it not melt a target? Because again, I'm doing pure corrosive damage. I'm getting plenty of status applications, and as you can see, the more I'm shooting, the more the damage numbers go up, because the lower and lower the armor on the target gets. But... There is a problem with an approach such as this with pure corrosive weapons that don't deal a whole lot of damage, and I mean a whole lot of damage upon impact, big numbers and all whatnot. If you fully remove the armor from an enemy and their health bar goes to red, that's the indication, right? So when the health bar goes to red, all the armor is gone, then your corrosive bonus also goes out the window with the target's armor. So I'm going to be showcasing this with a very specific mod setup. We're gonna be swapping out the 290 mods for the 260-60 mods so I can better illustrate the point. So Jolt instead of Convulsion and Pistol Pestilence instead of Pathogen Rounds. Because when it comes to most weapons on higher level content, the 260-60 mods simply provide better results. But considering that you're not gonna be getting headshots all the time, it's important to illustrate exactly what Overstrip does. Considering how corrosive damage should work in Warframe, fully removing the armor from a target shouldn't be possible, but it is, so let's showcase that. We're gonna be shooting this target until the point of overstrip, roughly 50% HP, the health bar goes red, and what is left now is cloned flesh. Gone is the ferrite armor. I want you guys to keep an eye on my consistent white damage. First, we're gonna be warming up the beam weapon, and I'm gonna be getting damage between 800 and 1300 on consistent white damage. Now take a look at that same white damage on a target that actually has that ferrite armor on. 1800, 1500, 2000, 200, 2300, up until the point of overstrip. As you can see, as soon as the armor is gone, so is your bonus. So your 75% bonus versus ferrite armor. What you have there is clone flesh, and against clone flesh you should be using other types of damage. For example, heat does have a bonus versus clone flesh. Now, with that out of the way, keep in mind that stuff like Overstrip is not really a concern when it comes to lower level content. It's really not. This is only when we're talking about higher level stuff, level 100, 120, and so on and so forth. 
And with that out of the way, let's talk about Rivens for the Embolist. I know you guys love this part of the vid, and you know what? I love it too. The ideal Riven, from my point of view, would be something like damage, multi-shot with a harmless negative. And Embolist Rivens are super cheap. You're talking about 20 plat, maybe 30 plat. I would buy one and go to Kuva and try my luck. This one is a loaner from a friend that has damage, multi-shot and cold. It's definitely not ideal, but it will be increasing my damage on the weapon to the point where I can actually afford to go for a 60-60 mod. Simply because with each and every tick I am doing more, so therefore to kill off a target I need less ticks, so therefore the chance of overstrip is a whole lot lower. And of course I'm gonna be keeping my ruinous extension because I love it and I can't play the weapon without it. Maybe you can, maybe you don't have an issue with the 10 meter range, but I certainly do. Now, a Riven disposition of 5 out of 5 should make one hell of a difference, and as you can see, the weapon is fully capable of basically melting level 120 corrupted heavy gunners. And what is that? 3 seconds? 2, 3, 4 seconds. Something like that. Now, with a showcase such as this, you might be wondering, why aren't people using this secondary weapon? It seems very powerful. And while it is very powerful, the answer would be the Atomos Exist, that you get it at MR5, so a lot faster than the Embolist, and that one has AoE capabilities similarly to how the Amprax works. Nope, not how the Ignis Wraith works, the Amprax works. And simply, the Atomos outclasses the Embolist in almost every single way. Now, the Embolist does have the edge when it comes to dealing one type of damage consistent. So again, if you need a weapon that deals pure corrosive damage, the Embolist is a good option, or maybe you need pure gas damage, and so on and so forth. Going for pure viral on the weapon, I wouldn't really do that, maybe against the infested, but even then I would still probably build a whole lot of heat. But if a weapon doesn't have any default AoE capabilities, what we can do is give it some. Introducing Punch Through with Seeker 2.1 meters. Now keep in mind that Punch Through currently in Warframe works a bit kooky. Link in the cards right now if you guys want to see a full demonstration on how Punch Through actually applies in Warframe. Now, if my calculations are correct, and they usually are, we should be able to hit all of the four targets within a line, especially considering that we kept a ruinous extension. So let's go like this. I'm gonna go for body shot so I can hit all of the four targets within a line. Overstrip, overstrip, and not overstrip. Weirdly enough, as you can see, this target didn't get hit all that much. But I am hitting all four targets, and while you are giving up one mod slot, from my point of view, it's totally worth it for the AoE capabilities that you are essentially adding to the weapon. Now, everybody loves punch through, yeah? Punch through is amazing in Warframe, but keep in mind that it doesn't apply in every single situation. Sometimes you're simply shooting one target, and in a situation such as that, your Seeker mod becomes basically worthless. Next, what we're gonna be doing is bumping up everything with Warframe buffs, and I'm not gonna be using Harrow because the base critical multiplier on the weapon is awfully low. So we're going back to Lady Mirage Prime, but we're gonna be using the Riven setup. When it comes to Warframe buffs, you can go for something like Pistol Lamp and increase your damage by 27%. Being an aura, everybody in your party will be receiving this benefit, and it is possible to stack this one up times 4. From my point of view, it's not really worth it. These Amp Auras only provide a pretty small benefit, and I would just go for my Commodity Aura. If you're up against the Grenier, however, the best choice is Corrosive Projection with minus 30% armor. When it comes to Arcanes, these are a lot more impactful. Let's take a look at Arcane Precision. Now this one gets you on headshot an 80% chance for plus 120% damage to pistols for 8 seconds, farmable from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. For a second Arcane, what you can go for is something like Arcane Avenger. Now this one is pretty good with the Embolus simply because the bonus is additive after. So the weapon will be going to 33% critical chance. But I'm going back to that critical multiplier. I gotta go back into the weapon, get that critical multiplier up, and the base is only 1.5. Again, from my point of view, it's simply not worth it. What you can use is Awakening. Arcane Awakening are free on reload, 40% chance for plus 100% damage to pistols for 16 seconds. Now this would be the budget option because it doesn't give as much damage as precision and it's not as reliable either. So if you guys have two arcane precisions are free, this would be the best way to go. And yes, arcanes do double stack, link of the cards right now for a full demonstration on that. But for right now, it's time for the best part. Mirage's lovely buffs, her first ability for the clones and her third ability for a massive damage increase. Now with a setup such as this, I can completely annihilate not one corrupted heavy gunner, but essentially an entire pack. 
And while I'm fully aware that something like this looks awfully impressive, keep in mind that most weapons in Warframe can be made to deal a whole lot of damage as long as you understand vulnerabilities and how multipliers apply in Warframe. In all honesty, it's more about knowledge than actual skill. As for the Imbalist, it's a pretty decent weapon. It's a strong weapon and if you need something to deal pure corrosive damage, a pure corrosive secondary or perhaps pure gas or pure viral, do take the Embolist under advisement. As always, my name is Malaysar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, by all means, I'd love to read it in the comment section down below. Also, in the comment section down below, if you want to suggest a particular weapon review. Now, in all honesty, I can't exactly promise you that it'll be done by next time or even within a week, but I can promise you that I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Until next time, my friends. Bye bye.